King Collector here, and today I'm introducing to you the new project we have here. This is a 14 footer V bottom aluminum boat. As you can see, it has not been used in a while. This was a project gone bad, basically. Uh, the boat does float, that's not the issue with it. Uh, the guy just, uh, he ended up having to get a different boat, basically. Long story short. This one wasn't going to be able to fit his needs, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a boat. I already tested it. It floats. Came with the trailer and everything. Paid $375, which nowadays, that is a smoking deal. The wheels are good. The frame is rock solid, not a speck of rust on it. It was just freshly painted, and I can tell just by feeling the metal that it is in really good shape. The only issue with it are uh, the lights do not work on it. That is it. Nothing else wrong with it. As you can see, this one has uh, water in it. The other one was busted off a couple years ago, I think is what he said. So uh, we'll have to get some new lights for it. I uh, actually had a reason to use my towing lights finally, so that was pretty fun. So uh, yeah, not much else to say about it. It has leaf, uh, leaf spring suspension on it. Just a square tube axle basic, nothing special. Uh, this is a 14 footer, I don't know if I already mentioned that or not, but um, it's hanging off the back because it's obviously not right, right here. We need to uh, fix this. We'll uh, flip the spare tire around and see if we can get it pulled up to that thing right there. And uh, that will make it a lot better. Uh, this winch is new-ish by the looks of it. Uh, the strap has kind of seen better days. It's not great, but uh, I think it'll work for now. We'll not have to worry about it right this instant. Of course, it has a jack and everything on it, and it's the screw-style coupler, and it's a 1 and 7 8 ball. So it's a pretty old trailer. They don't really use that design anymore. In fact, they don't at all. I just know. So uh, we might weld a 2-inch on it, although that one works just fine. I don't really see a reason to... Uh, uh, change it so I have a one and seven eighths ball so it's not an issue but anyways um, so what the guy was planning on doing with it is he was going to make one of those bass boat things it's a very pro uh, popular thing to do with uh, these bigger V bottoms so uh, you can see he got started on it but uh, like I said about midway uh, he just ran into something that wasn't going to work for him so I'd rather not go into the full details, but, you know, like I said, it's just long story short. Uh, it does have a seat back here, but obviously it's seen better days. Not an issue, because uh, we'll be tearing that out and uh, completely redoing this thing, so not a problem for us. Now, if you didn't read the title, I'll just tell you again. We're making this thing into a speedboat. It's going to be a V-twin surface drive setup kind of deal. Not like what you see, like the mud motors, but it'll be an inboard setup. And then uh, there'll be a shaft going through the transom here into a surface drive system. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I mean, there's not much else to really say about it right now. I did test it. It does float. I didn't see a drop of water in it towards the back at all or anything like that, which that's usually where them things start leaking. You can see it was fixed there before. I it looks like it looks like it's actually tagged, which is nice. Uh, brazing works too; works pretty much just fine. But well, tag is even better if you ask me. So uh, it's also obviously been painted on the bottom here. Uh, not the greatest though, so we might kind of fix that up a little bit, and maybe we'll polish this aluminum, fresh aluminum surface. The trailer is registered. Of course, I'm not going to show you the plate, but it's down there. It already has MC numbers on it, which is your boat registration for Michigan. So, uh, yeah, this boat is perfectly legal. So, I could literally take it out on the water and any lake I want to right now if I wanted to. So, we're not going to do that quite yet. Um, in fact, I don't even really see a point in doing that until we have the engine for this thing. What engine is it going to be, you might ask? Well... It's going to be a V-twin. I'm not sure if it'll be a Predator 670 
because uh, those are pretty hard to come by right now. It, like, there's no Harbor Freight store near me that has one in stock. The nearest one is 100 miles away, and I'm not driving that far for something like that. It's just not worth it to me. So I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace for old generators, like 10 kilowatt generators. Those usually have V-twins on them, and uh, haven't really found much. There was a 30 horsepower uh, Briggs Vanguard for sale, but that of course got bought right up. It was a really good deal, but I didn't have the money at the time, so unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to get it. But we got the boat here, and I got a smoking deal on this thing at least, so it's not all bad. Anyways, that's uh, pretty much it for the introduction. Alright, so I took the trailer and the boat into the garage last night just to kind of get a closer look at the damage on the trailer because yes this trailer is actually damaged you just can't really notice it without actually looking i did know it was damaged before i bought it the guy let me know and showed me where it is but i'll show you that in a second uh, i did fix this right here the winch was down here and the whatever you call this thing was up there which is not right so swap those around that pulls the boat up a lot farther up front here and it's not hanging off the back so much anymore which is a lot better for what i'm going to be doing to it so kind of yanked out the wiring a little bit but it started raining so i had to stop and i'll just i'll worry about that later uh, the lights are obviously damaged so i got a whole trailer lighting kit LED tail lights and uh, two amber marker lights for up here, pretty much right where this uh, tire is right here. So uh, I need to do the marker lights because uh, it is the law in Michigan to have two amber marker lights up front on any trailer that is over 80 inches. And this trailer is about 16 feet, which translates to 192 inches. So there was a bit of a misunderstanding here. It is actually 80 inches or over in width when you need the amber clearance lights, not length. The product description on Amazon just said trailer lighting kit for over 80 inches. I assumed it was length, but it's actually width. Obviously this trailer is not 80 inches or wider, so it does not need the amber clearance lights. But I paid for the whole kit, I'm gonna use the whole kit. Plus, it's already on its way to my door, and I don't feel like waiting an extra day just for lights. So, we're going to install them anyway. Roughly, I think. So, we'll get that properly set up, and uh, yeah, we won't need to worry about that anymore. And uh, I'll actually show you what I'm talking about for the damage. It's that right there. You can see it's bent, that cross member. So, if you actually come back here and look at it, you can see the tongue beam goes upward because that cross member is bent like this, it's twisted. And that's where the tongue beam connects to the main trailer itself. So that bracket is pushing down on the tongue beam and it's pivoting right there and it's going up right here. And what that's doing is this roller right here, it's on the beam of course, it's pushing the boat up which is lifting it off the bunks back here, as you can see. That's not supposed to be like that, obviously. So we need to get that straightened out for sure, which I have a couple ideas on how I can do that. Uh, I might just take the uh, floor jack, the pump jack for the cars, and wrap a chain around it, put it across these two beams, and put the chain under this one and it'll just pull it right back up, hopefully. That's the idea. I, it's probably not the safest idea, but it'll work. So, that's probably what I'll do for that. And uh, that's pretty much it for the trailer. For the boat, I ripped out that seat because it was rotted out anyway, threw it away, we won't need it. So, the engine will be pretty much right here between these two, like, gusset rail things and uh, 
I have this gas tank. This is from that Campbell Hosfeld generator that we uh, tried to fix early spring. And for this, the previous owner did this. He was building a bass boat out of this thing, like a miniature one. It's a very popular thing to do right now. But, uh, well, it just ended up not happening. So I don't know if I'll keep this or not. I'd like to because Come over here, you can see all the rivets. I'd need to patch all those rivets if I take that out, which I really don't want to do. I could just braze them shut, but man, I really don't want to do that. So, might just leave that there to be honest. It's not ideal, but I can make it work. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's where we're at right now. So, I guess uh, what I can do for now is uh, try to see if I can get that bend right there fixed so uh, yeah let's uh, let's do that real quick we should be able to do it fairly quickly so all right so that did definitely help a ton um, did still have to do some adjusting on the bunks but as you can see most of the bunk is touching the boat now and that's what matters so I also uh, rolled forward this uh, roller thing a little bit, and that helped too, so I think I'm going to call that good. Any kind of weight that gets put in the back there will eventually be sitting on those bunks, so it'll be okay. Alright, so that's pretty much all I can do, so I think I'll call this video good. Thank you guys for watching part one of the homemade speedboat. I will see you guys in the next video.